the Marmot, members of the Order Redentia, and the biggest chungus of the squirrel family. Marmots are found throughout the Northern Hemisphere and as far south as the Himalayas. Marmots typically can be encountered living in the mountains, meadows, plains, and forest environments. While typically considered social and cuddly furballs, marmots also have a dark side. Before we get into that darkness, why are you casting magic missile? There's nothing to attack here. I, I'm attacking the darkness. Let's learn some basics about these guys. There are around 15 species of marmot and four extinct species that have been found in the fossil record. Marmots come in various coloring and sizes, but in general, they're about the size of a large house cat and weigh between seven to 15 pounds or three to seven kilograms for those who hate freedom. Their fur pattern, thickness, and color vary based on climate and species. They typically come to maturity around two to three years and can live up to 15 years in captivity, but often have much shorter lifespans in the wild due to predators and other various factors. While some humans have taken marmots as pets, and they're typically pretty friendly when encountered in nature, it's not advised to interact with them as they can carry fleas which have the potential to harbor the bubonic plague. You know, the Black Death? That was estimated to have killed between 25 and 50 million people in the 1300s. So yeah, just leave them alone. Marmot diets are very diverse. Like humans, they're omnivores, meaning they'll eat plants and animals. Typically, they like to stick to grasses, leaves, flowers, and seeds, with the occasional consumption of insects and even eggs. They've also been reported to develop diabetes. Diabetes, 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 diabetes. diabetes. Thank you, Wilford. When fed an overly processed and sugary diet from tourists. Not surprising. Most marmots live in small family units and use their burrows year round for shelter and for hibernation. The groundhog, or woodchuck, is an exception as it typically lives on its own, more similar to our gopher friends. Speaking of woodchucks, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Okay, but seriously, where does this name even come from? According to several sources, this was the name given to these critters by the Algonquin tribe of Native Americans. The original name was pronounced Woochak. It's assumed that English settlers tried to reproduce this word, and they did a pretty bad job. Thus, we have the common version, Woodchuck. You may have also heard of them referred to as land beavers or whistle pigs. I've never heard of either of these, but the internet tells me it's a thing. These guys are also famous for their scream which has gone viral on YouTube and other social media platforms throughout the years. <coughs> These screams and squeaks are a form of communication that the marmots use to warn each other of predators and other important information. Interestingly, Research has found that these screams are unique to family groups, and other groups separated only by a few miles or kilometers won't always be able to understand what another group is trying to communicate with their signals. If you're enjoying this video so far and would like to come along for more, please like and subscribe. This helps me and my channel grow so I can continue to go for it, bringing content like this and more to life. So what the hell was I talking about when I said marmots have a dark side? As the environment continues to warm, whatever your personal feelings are on this, things are getting hotter. The marmot's environment is shrinking, and some species such as the alpine marmot are being forced to participate in a sort of battle royale. Like a game of Fortnite, survival is the objective, and these little cuties are absolutely slaughtering each other for dominance. They rely on snowpack to keep their burrows insulated, like a sort of underground igloo. As the climate warms, this snowpack is reduced, thus shrinking their available environment. In this game of burrows, a dominant mating pair will rule over the family unit, like overbearing monarchs. This dominance causes stress amongst the other family members, resulting in their hormones getting all thrown out of whack, and ultimately reducing their reproductive potential. These underlings are left with little choice. They have a few options though in this scenario. One, they can stay and be servants to these overbearing monarchs. Or two, they can leave and try to set out on their own destiny, taking over a neighboring territory. Or three, they can revolt. In the last two cases, 
a bloodbath typically ensues. Once a new marmot or marmot pair takes over, they'll kill all the younglings. The revolt option also involves killing, but that's generally the parents who are the victims in this scenario. Other species, like the yellow-bellied marmot, are actually thriving with climate change and adapting by shortening their hibernation. This reduced hibernation is giving them more time to bulk up and crank out significantly more pups. These absolute units have captivated people with their cuteness, but there's more than meets the eye. Whatever the case, we'll see them hitting the sumo ring and amplifying their psionic powers with strange headgear for years to come. Thanks for watching, and let's go for it.